Well, good evening. Good evening. God bless you and welcome to tonight's uh, broadcast of Bible study. I welcome you to come on in tonight, uh, like the broadcast, share the broadcast, let people know that we are live, that we're online and we're sharing from the word of the Lord on this evening. Amen. Come on in and um, let us know who you are. Let us know where you're watching from. And we certainly want to recognize you on tonight. <clears throat> Amen. Come on in. Come on in. Let us know where you're watching from. Well, in case you did not know or have not heard it today, it is the day which the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We are so thankful to God tonight for the opportunity uh, to be back with you. Uh, to share from the word of the Lord. Uh, it has been a wonderful, wonderful uh, past few days this week. God has been so gracious and so kind, and we honor him. We honor him for his goodness. We honor him for his love, his kindness, for his tender mercies. We thank God for each of you. We thank you for your prayers. We thank God for your faithfulness to the ministry and how, amen, you continue to serve Amen. In the capacity and the role that you do, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Amen. God bless you, Bishop Melvin Lambert. Amen. Hope Mills, North Carolina, by way of Pritchett, Alabama. Amen. My friend in the gospel, we thank God for you, Bishop Lambert. So glad to, uh, to have you with us on this evening. Amen. God bless you, uh, Sister Carolyn. We thank God for you being with us, and uh, we congratulate your husband on his baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe it was on Father's Day, so we thank God for, amen, you and Melvin Jr. We're praying for you all. We thank God for you. All right. Come on in. Come on in. Let us know where you're watching us from. We want to acknowledge you on this evening. Thank God for my parents. Amen. Uh, we thank God for you all joining tonight. Amen. We certainly give God all the praise. I'm telling you, saints, uh, we were in such an empowering uh, conference uh, this, this past week up in Florence, South Carolina. I was able to go and uh, be a part of uh, the CCFM uh, annual conference. We thank God for uh, the ministry of uh, Bishop Michael Blue and also for Bishop Lambert. Amen. He blessed us in the word of the Lord during that time as well. And I want to say, amen. We thank God for the gift that uh, God has given to the body uh, through these through these men of God and these women of God. What a powerful, powerful and empowering time. Amen. Together with the saints of the Lord. We thank God for the Martin family. God bless you all. We are yet rejoicing with you, Sister Shannon. Amen. I, uh, I had to go ahead and give them a sneak preview of your testimony uh, a couple weeks back. And so we look for the opportunity to hear it in the fullness. Amen. In the fullness thereof. Praise ye the Lord. Well, we want to, uh, again, welcome all of you. Uh, if you feel led to do so tonight, let us know that you're watching with us. We want to acknowledge you, those of you that are on our YouTube channel. You also can leave a comment. It will show up here in uh, StreamYard as well. So uh, we want to go ahead and begin tonight. We've got a, a little plowing to do uh, as we get into the word of the Lord. But uh, we certainly, again, want to acknowledge all of you that have taken the opportunity to join us on tonight. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to remember uh, <coughs> Elder Cedric King, uh, ask God to continue to heal his body, that God would raise him up, bring him out of the hospital. We are trusting God and we're believing him uh, to do just that. God bless the Lane family, uh, Lazarus and Tyra. We thank God for you uh, this evening. So let us continue to pray for Elder King. Let us pray for the bereaved families, those that are sick, uh, those that are uh, in hospitals. My Aunt Riola uh, continuing to believe God for her. 
uh, just all those that we the, that we know about. If you have names that maybe uh, we have not heard about or we may have forgotten, put those names in the chat tonight. And we're going to, as we pray, we're going to ask you to uh, come into agreement in prayer and pray over these names that are listed in our chat section, a uh, comment section. And we want to believe for the power of God to manifest in the lives of these individuals. I acknowledge my wife tonight. Let me do that. And I thank God for Lady Jada. Uh, thank God she's behind the scenes. She's always moving and working, but I want to honor her and acknowledge her on this evening and thank God for all that she does to help our ministry move forward. Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your presence tonight, giving you glory, honor, and praise, thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity together on this evening. It's in you, Lord, that we live, we move, and we have our being. God, we honor you on tonight. We humble ourselves before you. God, we say that we trust you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with every fiber of our being tonight. Lord, you are our way maker. You are our promise keeper. You are, God, our miracle worker. And we thank you tonight. We thank you for all that you are. You are our redeemer. You are our savior, the keeper of our souls. And Lord, we humbly submit ourselves unto you tonight. For we are no more our own, but we have been brought with a price. We have been bought with a price. And Father, because you redeemed our souls, because you, Lord, it was you that paid the ransom, that paid the ultimate price to deliver our souls, to deliver us from destruction. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. And we thank you on tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we have been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. We thank you that God, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of the world and spiritual wickedness in high places, Lord, are subject unto us through the name of Jesus Christ. Here Healing and deliverance is our portion on tonight. Deliverance is the children's bread. And Father, hallelujah, we thank you for deliverance on tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes, oh God, we are healed. And we thank you tonight. We stand on your word, God. We call upon you, Lord, to heal Elder Cedric King on tonight. We call upon you, oh God to touch his body, Lord, to raise him up. Even as, Lord, you made the declaration, God, in the book of Ezekiel, when I passed by you and saw you polluted in your own blood, I said unto thee, live. And so, Father, we send the word, the supernatural word that has supernatural, vested in supernatural power that brings forth supernatural results. We send that word to Elder Cedric King, Lord, from the crown of his head, Lord, to the soles of his feet tonight and we command him to live we command every part of his body Lord that's lying dormant to awaken now in the name of Jesus we command Lord wherever this blood is hemorrhaging father that you would shut it off now for life is in the blood and we speak right now oh God we speak oh God that his blood count shall increase we speak tonight Lord that the loss of blood ceases even now Oh God, we come into agreement, Father, and we stand on your word as believers in Jesus Christ. We stand upon the authority that you have given us. We operate in that authority tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare, Lord, that he is healed, oh God. He is healed, Lord, with your stripes tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, look upon every individual under the sound of my voice. Those tonight, God, that are standing in need of help. Those that are standing, God, God, in need of deliverance from a spirit of torment. Those who have loved ones, Lord, who have been captive oh God, taken captive by the enemy through deception, through lies, God, through misunderstanding. We speak the word of deliverance on tonight, Father, and we say, Lord, that they are delivered from the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. For you said the promise is under you and under your children and all that are far off as many as the Lord our God shall call. So, Lord, we call upon you to be a savior unto our lost loved ones tonight. Be, O oh God, a savior unto them and deliver them, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
And God, we give you praise. We give you glory and give you honor. We dedicate this time to you. We ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Let us know, God, what is on your mind tonight. And we give you thanks and glory for it now. Lord, we won't be hearers of the word only, but do us also. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we thank the Lord tonight. Again, for each of you that have joined us, <clears throat> we thank God for, amen, your continued support of the ministry. And we want to jump right into the word this evening. We want to, amen, dive in. We've been talking about, amen, the uh, just studying in concept uh, miracles, how Jesus was appointed as our miracle worker. <clears throat> Excuse me. He came as our miracle worker. He came to do deliverance in behalf of the people of God. Amen. Those who were tormented, those who were bound. Amen. He came with power and with authority. Paul began to preach at Cornelius's house in Acts chapter 10, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He didn't pick and choose. Amen. But it, he realized, amen, that we all belong to God. Amen. And his purpose was to redeem all men mankind back unto God. That is the message that we have to take out into the world. Amen. That is the message, the message of hope, the message of deliverance. Amen. That we must take out in the world and let people know that Jesus died, that you might be free. You don't have to stay in the shape you're in. You don't have to live in the condition that you're in. Jesus came to deliver you. Jesus came to make you free. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, so we, we, want, we want to say to you tonight, put that in remembrance. Put that in your remembrance. We want to stir up your remembrance tonight. Amen. That Jesus came to deliver all. Amen. Now, not only did he come to do this work, but what he set up, what he established for us, he set up a system. That amen redeemed us from the power of the enemy that brought us back from the power of the enemy. Amen. As we were praying tonight, he translated us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And so in this in this process, in this process, one of my favorite scriptures, Matthew uh, chapter uh, uh, Matthew chapter 19, I believe it is. Let me get over that to it right quick. Matthew, Matthew, Lord, I thank you. Matthew 28, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Amen. Verse 18, I'm sorry. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Amen. In heaven and in earth, all power belongs to Jesus. When he rose from the dead, he said, all power, all authority is given unto me. Amen. <clears throat> so what does that mean for us as believers? Because, amen, we want to make sure that we don't have a misunderstanding. We want to make sure that we see this thing the way that God has set it up. Now, in Ephesians chapter number two, uh, first of all, in, in chapter one, he talks about Christ being seated above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. He's the head of the church. He is the head of the church. Amen. Now, I, I love the way I love the way Paul picks up in chapter two and he says that we have been seated together with Christ in heavenly places. We have been seated together with him in heavenly places. Amen. So what that means to us, what that is demonstrating to us, what that is saying to us, amen, is the same power, the same authority that rests in Christ. Amen. When he said in Matthew 28, 19, all power, Amen. He's not talking about, amen, just the power to heal or just the power, amen, to preach or just power, amen, to, to make your, your limbs grow back. No, he's saying my power is all inclusive. 
It's all inclusive. Amen. I've got power. I've got authority over everything that exists. Everything in this world, everything in heaven is subject unto me. Amen. I've got power. Hallelujah. And so this is the concept that Paul is demonstrating to us in his writing in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. The same power that lives in the head, that resides in the head of the body, is the same power because we're joined together. Come on, saints. We are joined together. Amen. We are joined with Christ. We are joined unto him. We are his body. Amen. It's not that his head is in heaven and his body is detached and it's in the earth and there's got to be a coming together. No, sir, no, ma'am. Amen. We are one. The scripture declares unto us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Getting a little ahead of myself, but y'all pray with me. He declares unto us. Hallelujah. He declares unto us, he that hath joined himself unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. So that means what? We are one with Christ. We are one with Christ. And because we are one with Christ, the same power, the same authority that resides in Jesus Christ, the person of Christ Jesus, that's the same power, that's the same authority that's available unto us. And this is how we go about, amen, doing what Jesus did. Believe on me and the works I do, so shall ye do also and greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto my father. Amen. So in other words, hallelujah, when the church was baptized with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, amen, this is the same spirit, amen, that Jesus was baptized, the person Christ Jesus was baptized at the river Jordan, the spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. It's the same spirit that operates in us today, the same spirit. The same power, the same anointing. It's all the same. Amen. There, there are no differences. Come on, if you believe that, amen, react to it. There are no differences. It's not, amen, because we are in the earth, there's some lower power or lesser power that's available unto us. No, we have the full power of God accessible unto us and available unto us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus. So we're going to the scripture. <clears throat> I want to take you to Mark chapter three, Mark chapter three. And we're going to look at verses 22 through 27. But for right now, I want to focus in on the last part of uh, verse 27. I think it's verse 27. And I'm going to be reading from the message translation. He says, do you think it's possible in broad daylight to enter the house of an awake, able-bodied man and walk off with his possessions unless you tie him up first? Tie him up, though, and you can clean him out. Somebody ought to put that in the chat tonight. Jesus, clean the devil out. Amen. Come on, come on and, and, and partner with me on this. <clears throat> Jesus cleaned the devil out. He cleaned his house out. Amen. He cleaned his house out. Come on, put that in the comments. Jesus cleaned him out. Amen. That's exactly what happened. He cleaned him out. We're going to talk about this. We're going to we're going to we're going to uh, show you through the scriptures. Amen. How this this work took place. Amen. That we were translated. That we were delivered from. Amen. The power of darkness. Amen. And translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. So what was going on? What's some context here? We're going to again, we're going to get into this and we're going to try to elaborate. Amen. We've got some uh, uh, pretty intense weather going on tonight. So I'm not going to try to hold you at any great length because I don't if we lose power, we lose the broadcast. Amen. All right. So. The, 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 the religious leaders, those religious scholars uh, known as the Pharisees, here they are challenging the authority of Jesus. And, and because Jesus uh, came to them, 
and cast out devils. He was healing the sick. He was delivering the oppressed. He was doing everything, amen, that Paul, or rather Peter, talked about at Cornelius' house. Amen. Uh, uh, Peter gave witness of it and account of it. Amen. Uh, uh, all throughout the Acts, amen, we see accounts of the ministry of Jesus. Throughout the Gospels, we see accounts of, amen, the ministry of Jesus. And so what we're demonstrating, what he's doing, rather, is demonstrating, amen, that I have power and authority. I have authority from heaven to come and to do, amen, that which, hallelujah, has been commanded of me, that which is expected of me. Amen. And so they begin to accuse Jesus. They begin to say, well, you know, you're just casting out devils by the devil. Amen. You're using Satan. Amen. To cast these spirits out. But Jesus began to question them. Jesus began to challenge them and ask, now, how am I, amen, casting out devils using the devil? How can Satan get rid of himself? Amen. That's just like me sitting in my house saying, Noah Rocker Jr., I command you to leave this house right now. This house belongs to me and I command you to get out. Well, why would I put myself out of my own house? Come on, somebody. Amen. Do, do you see why we have to be so aware Hallelujah of those that want to contend with and be contentious against, hallelujah, uh, the authority of Jesus and the words of the Lord. And so he says, if Satan is fighting Satan, there wouldn't be any Satan left. <clears throat> Do you get that? If, if the devil is fighting against himself, then after a while, he's going to be consumed of himself. Huh? So that's why Paul was saying, if we bite and devour one another, amen, if we tear down one another, amen, if we slander and talk bad against those that are in the body of Christ, if we are doing that to one another, then soon we're going to be consumed one of the other. Amen. We're going to tear each other down rather than edifying and building each other up. And before you know it, there's nothing of us left. Amen. And so this is the principle that Jesus is explaining. Is it possible? Is it possible for me, for any man to walk into another man's house while he's awake? It's daylight. He's an able-bodied man and just take his possessions and walk out of his house without tying him up first. Can't be done because this man is going to defend what belongs to him. He's going to fight for what belongs to him. Now, you might ask the question, well, how do we belong to the devil? Well, it's not do we, but we did at one point in time. And those who have received the Lord Jesus Christ and who have received salvation, amen. That's why the scripture said we are no more our own, but we have been bought with the price. So he says, but if you tie him up, if you tie him up, you can clean him out. Amen. You can take back, you can take out everything, amen, in that house that you desire. If you bind him up first, amen, if you constrain him, if you restrain him to a degree that he cannot move, that he cannot operate, now you can go and you can clean his house out. You can clean his house out. You might say, well, well, pastor, how is this possible? How is this possible? What are you saying to us? <clears throat> Look at Romans chapter 5, verse number 12 is where we're going to begin. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12. Romans 5 and verse number 12. I want you to go there with me right quick. Romans 5 and verse 12. I'm going to go ahead and give you the verses. It'll be 12, 14, 17 through 19 for our moderator uh, to add that in the chat. <clears throat> the comment section, Romans chapter 5, verses 12, 14, 17 through 19. All right. Now, the scripture says, the scripture says unto us, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We were born in sin because of Adam's disobedience. The scripture says when he sinned, sin entered the world. 
and Adam's sin brought death. And then death was spread just like, amen, this, this virus, this pandemic that we are in the middle of. Amen. It's just spreading like wildfire. Well, this is exactly, amen, this principle. This is the concept of what we see when Adam sinned against God. When he sinned and ate of the forbidden fruit that God had commanded him not to in the Garden of Eden, we see death sin, amen, every man that came from Adam, amen, uh, as the scripture says in Genesis chapter 5 and verse number 3, amen, he brought forth another son by the name of Seth, named him Seth, and he said Seth was made in his likeness and after his image. Now we read in, in Genesis chapter 1, amen, God says that he created man after, amen, his likeness and after, hallelujah, his similitude. He made him to be just like God in his likeness and in his image. But now in Genesis 5, now that man has fallen, we see that uh, Adam, hallelujah, is creating being. The next being that he creates now is just like him. He's in a sinful state. And so not only that, the scripture says sin entered the world and then sin brought forth death. Amen. James grabbed this and he understood it because he said every man is tempted when he's drawn away after his own lust and enticed. And when sin has conceived, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Amen. And so death spread to everyone. Amen. That came after Adam. Every, every man, every woman, every child does not matter who you are. If you were born into this world, you came from mankind, from the seed of a man. Hallelujah. Then you were born into sin and death. Hallelujah. Supported on the man wants to die. And after this is judgment. Amen. So because of sin, we see death. We see death. All right, the next verse, verse number seven, uh, 14, I believe it was. He says, still, <clears throat> everyone died. From the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. God specifically, God explicitly, amen, tells Adam, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But the tree of the not, that's in the midst of the garden, the tree that's in the midst of, of the garden, you shall not eat the fruit thereof, lest ye die. And what did Adam do? Amen. Eve was deceived. And through her deception, she ate the fruit. And then she offered it unto Adam. And then he ate the fruit. All right. Now, what happens? They start to hide themselves from God because the scripture says they were naked. They perceived that they were naked. God asked them a question. Well, who told you that you were naked? Have you for, have you eaten uh, the fruit uh, from the tree in the midst of the garden? Amen. And we know the blame game starts. The blame game starts. But the scripture says here, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did, they still died. They still died because what? We were born into sin. We were born into, amen, the similitude of Adam. His disobedience passed on to everybody that was born of a man. We all can trace our origin back to Adam. Amen. So Adam is a symbol. He is a symbol. This is verse Amen. Number 17. He says, by if, if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. So if even though Adam sinned and his, his sin brought death upon all, amen, the scripture says, the scripture says God's grace is even greater. This is what Paul was really trying to exemplify, the grace of God. Sin brought forth death, 
But grace is what brings forth salvation. This is what brings forth righteousness. Amen. God's grace and his gift of righteousness for all to receive. Amen. We will live in triumph over sin and death. So there's a way for us to be victorious over sin and over death. You ought to say that with me. There's a way to be victorious over sin and death. And what is that way? Jesus is the way. You can put that in the comments tonight. Let me know you're listening. Jesus is the way. He is our victory over death. He is our victory over sin. Amen. <clears throat> Paul asked the question, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because we have grace. Because, amen, we have grace. Do we just keep on sinning and take advantage of that grace? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. We cannot continue to sin and we say that we've been born of Christ. Amen. We cannot continue to sin and we say Say that Christ lives inside of us. No, sir, and no, ma'am. Amen. There's no way possible that we can continue to live in sin and we say, hallelujah, that we are taking advantage of the grace of God. <clears throat> Cannot happen. Cannot happen. So scripture says, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. We were all brought under condemnation because of his sin. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Last verse, verse number 19. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. In other words, in Adam all died. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Amen. Many will be made righteous. Now, how is it that we can, uh, that we could be delivered from, amen, the power of darkness. How is it that we could be delivered from the law of sin and death? How is it that we could be delivered from, amen, uh, uh, the destruction which is to come? We were able, amen, we were enabled, we were empowered. This was done because of one person, because of one man's, diso uh, rather one man's obedience, and that is the man Christ Jesus. That's the man, Christ Jesus. And so 1 Corinthians 15, 22. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 15 and 22. The scripture declares, just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Amen. Amen. Now, this is why it's imperative. This is why it's extremely important for us, amen, not to be conformed to the world. This is why there must be a difference between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean. This is why there can be no fellowship between God and the devil. This is why there can be no agreement between the sons of God and the sons of Belial. Amen. This is why we cannot say that we are children of light, but we walk in darkness. This is why there is no agreement. This is why there is no fellowship. Amen. Because light and darkness cannot coexist. They cannot coexist. Wherever there is light, it illuminates the darkness. Amen. It makes known, it manifests what is actually in that room. It makes it known. And so this is why John, my God, in his first epistle, his second chapter, verses 15 through 17. I'm going to read it from uh, the King James Version, and then I'm going to go and do some elaboration from uh, the New Living Translation. He says, love not the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, verse 16, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that do doeth the will of God abideth forever. 
And so what Paul is simply explaining to us is that we, or John rather, is that we cannot be enamored. We cannot be in love with. We cannot be, hallelujah, so uh, passionately driven by the things of this world what the world has to offer. We cannot be so in love with the world that we fall out of love with Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, when we love the world, then the love of the father is not in you. The love of the father is not in you. Why? Because, amen, that, that, that's a competition. That's a competition. And you got to choose who you're going to love. I'm, I'm simply demonstrating to you tonight. When you come out of the world, when you come out of sin, what did Jesus pray? He did not pray that God would take us out of the world. No, he said, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil therein. So that means what? He expects us to stand in his authority. He expects us to stand upon his truth, amen, and be different from the world, to be distinguished from the world. The world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. But he makes it clear, this is not from the Father. This is from the world. And this world is fading away. This world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Amen. We'll live forever. So this is how. This is how. How are we able to live forever? How are we able, amen, to live distinguished from the world, apart from the world? How are we able to do this? We're able to do this through the authority of Jesus Christ. There it is. Through the authority of Jesus Christ. Now, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, David said. But when we look at the work of Jesus Christ, the ministry of Jesus Christ, the purpose of Jesus Christ, he delivered us. He delivered us from the power of sin. He delivered us from darkness. He delivered us from the spirit of this age, the spirit of this world. He delivered us from the power of the devil. He delivered us from the dominion of sin. Amen. And he gave us power to stay out. He gave us power to stay away. Power to come out of it. Power to stay out of it. Power to come out. Power to stay out. Hello, somebody. Now, when we look ultimately at why Jesus came, scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean? That he overcame the evil one. Jesus overcame the evil one. All right. <clears throat> now, back to what he was saying in the book of Mark. I cannot walk in the devil's house and take everything that the devil has, except I first tie him up. Now, when I tie him up, I can clean him out. Come on, somebody. When I tie him up, I can clean him out. Hallelujah. When I tie him up, I can clean him out. This is why Jesus had the authority to work miracles. This is why he had the authority to cast the devil out. This is why, Lord, I thank you. He had the authority to speak the word and the word heal those who were sick. He could speak the word and those who were oppressed were made free. He could speak the word and those, amen, who had been living under the oppression of Satan, those who were imprisoned by Satan. He could speak the word and there was so much authority in his word that it tied the devil up and when it tied the devil up he cleaned the devil's house come on somebody he was able then to clean him out my god i praise you what are you talking about preacher the daughter of abraham 
Scripture said that she had been in the stall of the devil for 18 years, bound by the devil for 18 years, but he opened the door of the stall and said, woman, thou art loose, hallelujah, of thine infirmity. And the infirmity came off immediately. Amen. She stood upright immediately. Why? Because he had authority. He had authority. The devil had no power over him. The devil had no power against him. <clears throat> we can take this back to the wilderness when Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The devil came to him offering him temptation, offering him things that would only, amen, play to the physical need, amen, that would only play to, hallelujah, pride and arrogance, the things that, amen, uh, God detests, and the things that God did not desire is what Satan offered to him, dressed up as though it would help him to overcome his wilderness experience. But what did Jesus do? He resisted the devil. This is why James was able to tell us, amen, res uh, submit yourselves, Peter, submit yourselves under God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, they sing that song, I beat the devil running, and I'm so glad. We don't chase the devil. We don't race the devil. Hallelujah. We command him to go. We command him to come subject to the name of Jesus Christ. We command him to come subject to the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. He tied him up and he cleaned him out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Why was Jesus? How was Jesus able to do this? Remember, I told you that when Adam sinned, every man sin and death reigned over all of us. Hallelujah. Until Jesus Christ came and delivered us from sin and death. Now, when did he do it? How rather, how was he able to do it? <coughs> how? Come on, somebody. How was he able to do this? Well, let's look at Luke chapter one. Because you got to remember, in order for, in order for Jesus to overcome the devil, there had to be something different about Jesus. He couldn't, he came as a man. But there was something unique about his composition. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the word, come on, John chapter 1, verse number 12. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word, that's not 12, uh, 14. And the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. This is how the word was incarnate. Amen. The word was made flesh. My God. And so what does, how did that happen? Well, Luke chapter one, you can start around verse number 28. Gabriel ap appeared unto Mary and began to give her a salutation. Amen. He began to say that she was highly favored of God. Amen. God favored her. Let's go there right quick. One and 28. One and 28. Angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now, this thing troubled Mary. <clears throat> this saying troubled her. Amen. And, and cast in her mind, what kind of salutation is this? What kind of greeting is this? But the angel of the Lord began to say unto her, amen, fear not, Mary. You have found favor with God. Amen. Don't be afraid. You found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. Now, one of the things that troubled my spirit, I was reading somewhere uh, recently, <clears throat> and you got those who are non-Christian who uh, are not celebrating uh, the 50-year battle 
uh, with Roe v. Wade and the Supreme Court and that thing being overturned. And now innocent lives are not being taken. Amen. Murder is no longer, amen, legal in the United States of America when it comes down to, amen, unborn children. Hallelujah. We know that there are some egregious circumstances. There are, amen, uh, circumstances through which, amen, women are uh, become pregnant. Hallelujah. But that still does not give anybody the right to take a life. Amen. And so now people have gone into the holy word of God. Are you with me here tonight? People have gone into the holy word of God and now are using this scripture to say that, G that God raped Mary. That God raped Mary. Listen, that is such that is so uh, uh, out of the character of God and out of the will of God. And, and, and it's frustrating to our spirits because you got to remember, God created Mary for this purpose. It was a favorable thing for her to carry, amen, to bring birth, to birth into the world, the, the Savior of the whole world, the lamb who would be slain for the sins of the world. He was slain from the foundation of the world for our sins to take them away. And now they twist the scripture. They take the word of God and manipulate it and try to prove a point, amen, to try to condemn God and bring sin and shame upon the name of God. But this is where we as believers have to stand ready to defend the word of God. Stand ready, hallelujah, to share the mystery of God's word. He says to her, you are going to conceive and give birth to a son and you will call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, his, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Mary asked the question, how shall this thing be? I don't know a man. Mary was thinking, amen, on the order. She was thinking on, amen, the natural way of conception, the natural way, oh my God, that things were to be done. But God is saying, no, Mary, I'm doing a new thing. You found favor with me, and because you have favor with me, I'm going to show you, amen, a favorable way that this is going to be done. I'm going to do something supernatural in your life. <clears throat> and he says, the Holy Ghost shall, over, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. You got to remember, God desires to partner with flesh and blood. To make things happen in the supernatural in this earth realm. Amen. So we can never limit God. We can never limit God based upon our limited knowledge and our limited abilities. But what we must do, amen, we must completely yield to God and allow him to do the supernatural work in our lives. Now. This is how he would come. This is how it would happen. But what was the purpose? What was the purpose for him coming? Uh, John 3, 17. Let's go there right quick. John 3 and 17. We'll start at 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He did not send him here to judge the world. 
Not at this time. He says, but that the world through him might be saved. This is why he did not bring a condemning message. This is why he did not bring a judgmental message. This is why he did not yield to the temptation of being judgmental. Amen. That came from the scribes and the Pharisees. But rather he came with the message of salvation. He came with the message of deliverance. He came with the message of hope. He came to let the world know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. He came to let the world know this is your day of deliverance. This is your day of salvation. Amen. So to those that are watching, those who may come back later that may ask the question, how can this be? How can I be delivered from this power? The answer is through Jesus Christ. He came to save you. He came to deliver you. He came to set you free. He came to make you whole. He came to make you a new creation. A new creation. Now, let's extend upon this. Let's extend upon this. John wrote in his first epistle, chapter 3, verse number 8. For this purpose, <clears throat> the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That was the purpose for him coming, to destroy the works of the devil. This is what he meant by saying, I can go into, amen, the strong man's house and tie him up first. And if I tie him up first, I can clean him out. I can destroy the works of the devil. I can destroy that sickness off of your life. I can destroy that oppression off of your life. I can take away the things that are hindering you, the things that are resisting you, the things that are stopping and opposing you from walking in the fullness of your purpose, the fullness of which God has called you. I can take that away from you. I can deliver you and I can make you free. Did he do it for you, saints? Did he do it for you? Has he done it for you? If he did it for you, put it in the comments tonight. I am delivered from the devil. I'm delivered from sin. I'm delivered from the works of the devil. Amen. Places I used to go, I don't go anymore. Amen. I don't find pleasure there anymore. Amen. Things I used to do to satisfy my flesh, I don't do those things anymore because God stepped in and changed my life. He changed my life. My God. Come on, come on, somebody. He changed my life. He changed my life. I'm no more the same. I have been bought with the price. And therefore, I glorify the Father. Hallelujah. I glorify the Father. I'm closing. I'm closing. But Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. It's where we're going to start. Scripture says that he was made, Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the purpose of suffering. Hmm? Look at that. For the suffering of death. He suffered death for us. Sin and sin brought forth death. Death came upon all mankind from Adam to Moses. Hmm? But what? <clears throat> he was made a little lower than the, than the angels. He was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. What did uh, the uh, 12th chapter lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us? That's 2, 12 and 2. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
And now he sat down on the right hand of the father in glory. So when he died, when he suffered death, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'm able to take it up again. And so when he died, he rose and he rose with glory and honor. Scripture says here, and this is the New Living Translation. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. Oh, I love that song from the old church. Give up and die now. You won't have to die no more. Amen. Die if I die in Jesus, I don't have to die no more. Amen. Hallelujah. If I, if I die now, I won't have to die anymore. Amen. Why is that? Because Jesus tasted death for everyone. What he's simply saying to us is if we give up this life, if we die to ourselves, if we die to this sinful nature, we will live with him forever. Now, he says in verse 10, God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. He chose to bring us into glory. Come on, somebody. Now, what are you saying there? It was only right that he should make Jesus through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. So he made us, or rather chose us, to bring into glory. And he would use Jesus as the perfect leader through his suffering. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience through the things that he suffered. Now, if we choose not to suffer, if we choose not to go through, then we forsake our promise. The scripture says, amen, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we suffer for righteousness sake, happy are we. Why? Because at, for as much then as Christ suffered for us in the flesh, we are to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind. He that has that suffered he that suffers in the flesh has ceased from sin. First Peter chapter four, verses one and two. Amen. When we suffer in the flesh, the scripture says we have ceased from sin. And so we become like Jesus. The suffering is not to make you bitter. The suffering is not to make you angry. Amen. The suffering is designed to make you like him. Come on, somebody. It's designed to make me like Jesus. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. Hallelujah. When we are made holy through Christ, we become the sons of God. The scripture says we are heirs of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. He can call us this because, my God, he sees that we're going through the same sufferings. He sees that we have been made holy by the same God. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. Verse 13, he also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children God has given me. We're going to put our trust in God. This is why we don't put our trust in the government. We don't put our trust in the world systems. We don't put our trust in any human being. We put our trust in God. Amen. And when we put our trust in God, God will take care of us. Look at verse 14, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So he had to suffer. He had to die. He had to lay down his glory and come in the form of flesh and blood, just like us, in order to break the power of the devil and to deliver us from the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Verse 16, we also know that the son did not come to help angels. Come on, somebody. He didn't come down here to help angels. 
He didn't come down here to help them fulfill their assignment. The scripture says in Psalm 103, verse, two, uh, verse 20, the angels, uh, his ministering spirits, they excel in strength. All they do is listen for the voice of God's command and they come into the earth to do God's bidding. They don't need any help. But Jesus came not to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Come on and look at your neighbor online tonight and tell him he came to help you. He came to help you. He came. <laughs> He came to help you. He came to help you. Verse 17, therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us. He had to be. Come on, somebody. He had to be made like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. <clears throat> now, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. We're going to get back on this. The Lord says the same next week. Um, amen. Just talking about authority, talking about authority, because I'm trying to demonstrate to you, saints, the place where we're headed, the direction that we're moving in as a nation as a world, as a human race, amen. The direction is anti-Christ, is anti-God. Anti-Christ and anti-God. We cannot depend on the Republican Party. We cannot depend on the Democratic Party, amen. We cannot depend on the independents, amen. But God has made the church the most powerful institution that there is, the most powerful organism that there is. And if the church could come together and operate in the authority that Jesus has given unto us, he said all power, all authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Now go ye into all the world. Go ye and do what I command you to do. Go ye in the power of the Holy Ghost. Go in my power, go in my authority and do what I tell you to do. And so this is the direction. This, this is where, amen, God is leading us. Amen, this is where God is leading us. Demonstrating to you tonight how Jesus Christ himself delivered you from the power of darkness. How Jesus Christ himself came and made you free, made you a new creation in him and empowered you by his spirit to walk in the authority that he has given unto the church. That's the direction we're headed. That's the direction we're headed. If we're going to work miracles, if we're going to see signs, if we're going to see wonders, we've got to know the power that resides in us. We've got to know the authority that we have been deputized to operate in. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you tonight. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you in the name of the Lord. We pray that you have enjoyed this lesson tonight. I uh, pray that you will join us on next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Amen. For the continued study of God's word. Amen. Join us on Sunday. The Lord says to say 9 a.m. We'll be worshiping in person, 1414 2nd Avenue North, City of Bessemer, Alabama, 9 a.m. Worship experience, 845 prayer, 9 a.m. worship. We expect a mighty move of God on Sunday. We hope to see you there. God bless you. And uh, for those of you that we won't see again before, amen, have a wonderful, safe, and happy 4th of July uh, uh, Independence Day celebration. Be safe, saints. Drive safely. Amen. Watch what you're eating. Amen. Don't, don't allow the spirit of gluttony to come over you. Amen. Eat what you uh, enjoy in moderation. Eat in moderation. Amen. You can freeze it for later or cook it again, but eat in moderation. God needs your, you to have a healthy temple so that he can use you. Come on, somebody. He needs you to have a productive temple so that he can use you. 
Amen. So don't, don't get out there and overdo it. Overextend yourself. Overeat. Don't, don't do that. Amen. But eat in moderation. Enjoy in moderation. Amen. Live so that God can use you. Amen. God bless you tonight. Have a wonderful evening.